All right, take number three on the should you use visual prescripting in your Unity project video? At least the third take. Should you use visual scripting in your Unity project? Well, that's what I wanna talk about today in this video. In one form or another, this comes up all the time in video comments, Discord chats, even with my real life students. Often what is really being asked is not whether visual scripting should be used, but more along the lines of which is better, visual scripting or text-based coding, or can I do everything I want with visual scripting? And the honest answer to those questions, well, it's not the same answer for every person or every project. And there is no one right answer for everyone at every point in their game development journey. Because that's a really important word. And that's what this is. This is a journey. No matter whether you're downloading Unity for the first time, completing your first game, or maybe you're a senior engineer at a major studio. It's a journey and it takes time. The tools that you need, and just as importantly, the tools that you can actually make use of at one point in your journey are different from other points in that journey. If that's not the nice clean answer you were hoping for, tough nuts. Sorry, the truth is a bit complicated. So this video, it's gonna be one part of me sharing my personal journey, one part brief history of Bolt and what's now called Unity Visual Scripting, and one part attempting to answer the question whether you should use visual scripting in your Unity projects. Eight years ago, I was leaving one teaching job for another and starting to wonder how much longer I would or could continue working as a classroom teacher. While doing a little online soul searching, I found an article about learning to program, which has been on my to-do list for a long time. Now, I have two physics degrees, but surprisingly, I only took a single programming class in college and it was absolutely horrible. So I knew basically zero about programming. Nonetheless, I bookmarked the article and came back to it several months later after starting my new job. One of the suggestions in the article was to learn to program by learning to use Unity. Okay, Unity looked pretty, so why not? And I was in love from the moment I made my first train and was able to run around on it. I kept exploring and learning more about Unity and the tools that came with the engine. And of course, it didn't take long before I needed to do some programming. I started with JavaScript, otherwise known as UnityScript, as it was easy to read and I found a great series of videos walking me through what I thought were the basics. But I didn't get very far. Coding took a lot of time and a lot of the code I wrote was a not so distant relative to just guessing and checking or a huck and pray. Then I saw Playmaker. It looked amazing. Making games without code? Yes, please. But as my projects got more complicated, I started to find the limit of the actions built into Playmaker and I slowly got frustrated. Sure, I could make a game, but it's not a game I wanted to play. So I made the difficult decision to dive into learning C Sharp. I knew it would be hard, I knew it would take time, but I was pretty sure it was what I needed to do next. Which meant, all of a sudden, I couldn't do anything. Make a character move forward, pick up a collectible object, launch a projectile. Every step required a new Google search. What was once easy with Playmaker became a struggle with C Sharp. It was hard to stay focused, and the desire to do just that one little thing with Playmaker was really strong. And like most everyone else, I struggled to piece together tutorials from so many different voices and channels scattered all over YouTube. After a few months of that struggle, I changed my strategy, I bought a book, and then another, and another. I now have thousands of pages of books on Unity, Blender, and C Sharp on my bookshelf. Each book pushed me further and taught me something new. And years later, I still have books that I need to read. So let's fast forward a little bit. With three years of experience using Unity and Blender, plus an upcoming release on Steam, I felt confident enough to teach a high school course using Unity. For the course, I chose to use Playmaker over C Sharp for its simplicity and to parallel my own journey. And no surprise, my students were up and running quickly and having a great time. But eventually, my students found the same limits that I did. I would inevitably end up writing custom actions for my students so they could finish their projects. And now, to be clear, this isn't to take anything away from Playmaker. That's actually how Playmaker is designed to be used. But as a teacher, it's really hard to see your students' creativity limited by the tools you chose for them to use. So after two years of using Playmaker in my classroom, Bolt popped up on my radar. The learning curve was certainly steeper, but it used reflection, and that meant almost any third-party tool could be integrated, and more importantly, the majority of c -sharp commands were ready to use out of the box. Again, amazing. I took a chance and committed to use Bolt for the upcoming school year. As student prototypes were coming together, most students didn't run into the limits of Bolt, but some still did. Some groups still needed c -sharp scripts to make their project work. And that was okay, because Bolt 2 was on the horizon, and it was going to fix the most major of Bolt's shortcomings. Bolt 2 was going to bring us classes, scriptable objects, functions, and events, all native to Bolt. 
it also was going to generate c -sharp code. One of the developer's stated goals was for Bolt 2 to help users bridge the gap from visual scripting to c -sharp. And the code generation was a huge piece of making that a reality. While all of these new features still weren't going to bring Bolt on par with c -sharp, and there was no inheritance or interfaces for starters, it did shore it up enough that in my opinion, small solo commercial games could be made with it. I could even imagine small indie studios using it in a final build. It was faster, easier to use, and more powerful, albeit at least a year away from being production ready. Now, to be clear, I still wasn't using Bolt in my personal projects, but I very much believe that Bolt and Bolt 2 was the right direction for my class. As Bolt 2's release was getting closer, it looked so good. As a community, we started to get alpha builds to play with and test, and it was, in fact, really good. I started making Bolt 2 videos and was preparing to use Bolt 2 with my students in the upcoming school year. Even more exciting, Unity bought Bolt and a few weeks later made it free. This meant more users and more engineers working to improve and finish Bolt 2 faster. My channel was booming and the whole community was excited. The future of visual scripting looked amazing. And then the next thing happened. The higher-ups in Unity decided to cancel Bolt 2. And to be honest, I still can't believe they did, but they did. And sometimes I still dream that they'll reverse course, but I also know that will never happen. That ship has sailed. Unity has chosen accessibility over functionality. Unity has chosen to onboard more users rather than give current users the tools they were expecting, the tools they'd been promised, and the tools they'd been asking for. So, okay, what do I mean by all that? Well, for many, visual scripting is an easy on-ramp to game development. It's less intimidating than text-based code, and it's faster to get started with. It certainly was for me. For those without much programming experience, visual scripting may be the easiest or even the only way to get started with game design. It's a big task to make anything with Unity, so lowering that bar in just about any way allows people to be more creative. And that, that's a good thing. And now here's where I may piss off a bunch of people. I promise that's not the goal. I'm just trying to be honest, and this might be the part you're actually wanting to hear. As I said before, game development is a journey. We learn as we go. Our skills build, and for the first couple of years, we simply don't have the skills to make a complete and polished game that can be sold for profit, or even frankly, maybe enjoyed by others. In those early stages of the journey, visual scripting is useful, maybe even crucial, but as our project gets more complex, the current visual scripting tools start to fall apart under the weight of our designs. If you haven't experienced this, that's okay. If you keep at game development long enough, you will eventually see the shortcomings of visual scripting. You can see this almost every week on my Discord as folks bump into the limits, and frankly, they've been sold something that isn't quite what they've been told it was. Now, to be clear, 100% clear, it's not that visual scripting is bad. It's not, it's great for what it is. It just doesn't have all the tools to build, maintain, and expand a project much beyond a shakily held together prototype. There are just too many missing pieces and important functionality that doesn't exist. And based on Unity's roadmap for visual scripting, adding those features isn't Unity's goal. My current project, Grub Gauntlet, is simple, but I wouldn't dream of creating it with Bolt or any other visual scripting tool. So rather than give the Bolt community the tools to complete games, Unity has given the community a tool to help us learn to use the Unity engine and a tool to help us take those first few steps in our journey of making games. So what do I really think about visual scripting? Well, Bolt or Unity visual scripting is fantastic. It really is. But it is what it is, and it's not more than that. Visual scripting is an onboarding tool. It's a way to expand the reach and the size of the community using Unity. Unity is a for-profit company, and visual scripting is a way to increase those profits. Now, that's not a cynical criticism. It's just the truth. If Unity doesn't make money, the engine that we love will stop being developed, and that's not good for anyone. Unity has the goal of democratizing game development, and while working toward that goal, they have been constantly lowering the barrier for entry. They've made Unity free and are continuously adding features so that we can all make prettier and more feature-rich games. And visual scripting is one more step in that direction. By lowering that barrier in terms of programming, more people will start using Unity. Some of those people will go on to complete a game jam or create an interesting prototype. Some of those may go on to learn to use Blender, Magic of Voxel, and C Sharp. And some of those will go on to make a game that you might one day play. So yeah, Bolt isn't the tool that lets you make a game. It certainly doesn't allow creating games without code, because frankly, that is just total bullshit. But Bolt is the tool that can help you start on that long journey of making games. 
So to the beginner, I say this, you should proudly use visual scripting. You are learning so much each time you open up Unity. So don't be embarrassed about using visual scripting tools. Don't make excuses for it, but do be ready for the day when you need to move on. You may never make it to that point. You may stay at the stage of making prototypes or doing small game jams, and that's awesome. The journey is really hard, but there may come a day when you have to make the jump to text-based coding. It's a hard thing to do, but it's pretty exciting all the same. If and when that day does come, don't forget that Bolt helped you get there and was probably a necessary step in your journey. The C Sharp programmer, even if you don't use visual scripting, you can probably read it and help others. It's okay to nudge folks in the direction of text-based coding. It is, after all, a more complete tool. But we don't need to be a jerk about it or make people feel like they're wasting their time. Instead, I think we have a duty to support those who are getting started just like we did so many years ago. The YouTuber, if your title or thumbnail for a Bolt video contains the words without code, you are doing that for clicks and views. It's not serving your audience and it's not helping them make games. So please stop. Finally, to the Unity management. I think you made a mistake with Bolt 2 and you let the larger Bolt community down. It was that same community that helped build Bolt into an asset you wanted to buy. You told us one thing and you did another. You made a promise and you broke it. Just look at the Bolt Discord when you took over Versus Now. It's a very different community and those who built it have largely disappeared. I asked a question about creating tutorials for Bolt in the Ambassador channel over a year ago and it has gone unanswered and unacknowledged. Now, I'm sure you will make more money with Bolt integrated into Unity than if Bolt 2 had continued. That's okay. Just don't pretend that wasn't a huge piece of the motivation. Be honest with your community. Bolt and other visual scripting tools are stepping stones. It's part of a larger journey. It's not complicated. It's not demeaning. It's just the truth. And I think we can handle the truth. So there you go. Maybe not what you were hoping for. Maybe not what you wanted to hear. But hopefully that was interesting and better yet for you and your game design journey. And until next time... Happy game designing. Whew. I wonder if this video will do okay. Should you use visual scripting in your should you use should you use visual scripting project? Should you use visual scripting? It's so many use.